I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 16th of March, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to be tackling that interesting and sticky subject that comes up so much online when people are discussing Nicaragua, the Nicaragua Canal. After the bump. Today is Thursday and I was out at the beach today. As many of you know, I stayed there last night. My dog's behind me and she loves when we do the show. Uh, and uh, this morning was super busy. I had so much work I had to do. I ended up getting stuck working from the beach after doing a morning walk. Did some beautiful photography. Got a little bit of scenes of the beach. It was absolutely beautiful. I'll show what little bit I can during the show, but that was it. Ended up working from the beach all day, getting back in the afternoon and just having a really long, rough day dealing with things at the office, but everything's fine. Today though, we're going to talk about the Nicaragua Canal. A lot of people in general, if you go to YouTube and look up things about Nicaragua, you find a lot of people talking about the Nicaragua Canal. And I have found a number of videos that are extremely popular that are talking about the future of Nicaragua and how the canal is gonna reinvigorate the economy and create all these jobs and it's gonna bypass Panama, it's gonna shift the balance of world power and all these amazing statements. I think we need to go back and give a little bit of history about the Nicaragua Canal because I think people are missing a little bit of the context. So let's save it for the end what the, the big surprise is, but I think you'll figure it out as we go along. A few people on my channel have brought it up that there's some concern that maybe property values will change or jobs will change or property will be appropriated for the canal or whatever. So let's go back in time to the mid 2000s and talk about the state of world logistics. If you wanted to get between the Atlantic Pacific Oceans, basically there was one way to do it. and That was the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal was a single canal going through the nation of Panama north to south. It was built a long time ago, and at the time that it was built, it was proposed that maybe Nicaragua would make a better location for the canal. So the concept of a Nicaragua canal is something like 130 years old. Maybe somebody thought of it before that, but at about the same time we were proposing Panama, Nicaragua was being considered as well, and many people thought that Nicaragua was the better location for a canal at the time, but due to politics and engineering and just the chain of events, the French attempted a uh, canal in Panama because it's where they were able to attempt it. They failed when America picked up working on the canal. They simply started from where the French had already been working because the French had already done some of the work and that changed the balance of what made sense. Would Panama have made sense had we done engineering studies at the time? I don't know, but Nicaragua very easily would have won that competition had we been starting from a green field, but we were not. We were starting from a brownfield engineering scenario. This is a long time ago. Since then, one of the problems with Panama is that when it was built, it was an extremely large canal, but by today's standards, it's not that large. And the ships that are able to go through it are known as a Panamax ship, meaning it is the maximum size that, a Panama can, that the Panama Canal can handle. This was very limiting as ships that were not traversing the Panama Canal were much larger than a Panamax. Panamax actually was the smallest of the super ships because it was the smallest of the constraining factors that a ship may have to put up with during most international transits. So this was actually a small standard of ship and it created a lot of problems, it made shipping expensive and it limited the amount of traffic that could go through the Panama Canal at any given time. It's a major constraint. Because of this, and because of lots of other factors, such as Panama only having one canal, that it is heavily controlled or at least influenced by the United States, that it's in a precarious position, there was talk that maybe having another canal, possibly sponsored by a different world power in Nicaragua, where it may have been more feasible to put a canal in the first place, might make sense. In 2013, the idea was floated and actually got some momentum. I don't know how much and things get pretty murky. If you try to look up anything about the Nicaragua Canal, you'll actually find that there's extremely little documentation on this. There's some names, there's some things happened, but there's actually pretty much nothing. It's mostly like working from newspaper clippings. In 2013, the project supposedly moved forward. Some money changed hands, some legal things 
changed, some appropriation of property supposedly happened or the future appro appropriation of property happened and planning was begun. At least that is what we are told. None of that planning is actually available to the public to the best of my knowledge. So it is just trusted that there was a company in China working on this project. A Chinese billionaire set up a company that was going to back the program and began working on it. That's what we are told by every source that we have, including like Wikipedia. During 2013, 2014, and some of 2015, people were talking about the canal heavily. I lived in Nicaragua in 2015, and this is an important piece of the story, not my piece per, per se, but the fact that I was here and was able to see it firsthand. When I moved to Nicaragua in 2015, a couple major things had already happened. One is I had already spent years hearing about the Nicaragua Canal, so I was already familiar with its concept, with the project, with its hopes and goals and plans, and the fact that it was supposedly underway and what to expect and what needed to be done and what its risks were. Its number one risk was that Panama would decide to enlarge their own canal, make it larger than Panamax, or put in a second canal altogether, and potentially beat them to the punch. Panama already had the logistics, all the pieces uh, in, in play, all of the key players were there, the stakeholders, the shipping companies, the logistics, everything. So if Panama could do it earlier, it was the preferred location. When I lived in Panama earlier in 2015, one of the things that I got to witness firsthand was the creation of the new Panama Canal, the one that is bigger than the Panamax. That was completed in 2015. We saw it almost at completion when we lived there. At that point, it was already known in Panama that Panama was about to complete and there was no way it wasn't going to complete. They had all the engineers, all the parts, all the funding, everything was done. Their canal was essentially finished. It was also known that Nicaragua hadn't started because Panama was so far along by the time they got everything in place. So when we lived in Panama in early 2015, in the region, it was considered that Nicaragua had simply not moved fast enough or Panama had moved so fast that the concept of the Nicaragua Canal just evaporated. It was a legitimate concept. It might have made sense, but Panama was able to put together the funding and the engineering and make their new project happen so quickly that Nicaragua never had a chance to break ground. And they barely got through the planning stages if they actually did. So by early 2015, living in Panama, we already knew the Nicaragua Canal had to be off the table. Later that year, we ended up moving to Nicaragua completely by coincidence, but it makes it an interesting part of the story that we happened to live here then. And late in the year, right at the end of the year, we were visiting San Juan del Sur and drove to the Costa Rican border by accident. And when doing so, we passed the signs that said future site of the, Pan of the Nicaragua Canal. At that point, those signs were overgrown. It was already a joke in the country. The entire time that we had lived in Nicaragua, people had already said that the canal was long dead. It had no, the ground had never been broken, although the news reports had said that it was. The final route and path were never actually determined. Some signs went up, but nothing had happened. At that point, there was still some talk in the news that maybe it would continue, but that made no sense because its fundamental tenets of why they wanted to do it were gone. It didn't make any sense to continue it because it would never have the value it was supposed to have had, so it would never be able to pay for itself. It was a bit of a risky endeavor when Panama didn't have the super canal, but when it did, it was inconceivable to even try talking further about anything like the Nicaragua Canal. So for people in Nicaragua, by late 2015, it was already a passe subject. You didn't want to talk about it because it was sore and everyone was burned out from two years of being told it was going to happen, being fearful of the changes, worried about the wildlife, concerned about everything. And then it never happened at all. So all that was for naught. And that's fine because it probably is best that we don't have one here. It would have caused a lot of damage and changed a lot of things, possibly for the negative. There was a lot of problems with the, with the canal project that a lot of the jobs weren't going to come to Nicaragua and the expertise necessary to run the canal didn't exist in Nicaragua. There was just a lot of logistical headaches that may have caused long-term problems. So we may be glad that the canal never happened. But it's important to note, by 2015, Nicaraguans were already over it and it was dead. If you look at a lot of these reports on YouTube today, on, on different sources, but YouTube especially, and Rumble, they act like this is new news and that the canal is a future project and that China is stepping in and all these things are happening to make the canal happen. But it's actually regurgitating 10 plus year old news. Remember, this is 2013 that the project started. It's already 2023. 
and it was not like the first time it was proposed in 2013. And by 2015, eight years ago, the project was so dead that it was laughable. It was already a joke as to how how dead it was. It wasn't like it had just died. It's not like it barely didn't make it. It was never even close. It was just a funny news report that people ran with to get headline attention. That was really it. It's not that people weren't trying to do it or planning to do it or hoping to do it, but they were so far from realistically actually doing it that it was never honestly a competition for the Panama Canal. But it may have lit a fire for Panama to ensure that they did actually compete the larger canal. So that's probably good for everyone anyway, but that is the actual result of it. By 2016, a lot of people were saying, well, this Chinese company still retains the rights to do all these things. Uh, Nicaragua has not revoked their rights to do it, so the canal must still be happening, or at least could still happen, and we should be looking for that. Well, it's important to go and look at what exactly happened in China. The billionaire who was behind this project, this was not backed by the Chinese government, it was backed by a bank and a billionaire banker, Supposedly, this is a very murky figure. It's hard to get information on this person. It's not clear that they were ever really able to build this canal at all. They never, one, raised the funds to do the canal. That stopped short of that. Two, they were a billionaire, supposedly, when the project was supposed to start. But not long after the canal was supposed to have already been finished, it turned out that he had lost his fortunes, and while he was still a rich guy, he was not a billionaire and in no way prepared to be a financier of a canal or any other large-scale project. There was a uh, holding company in China that was put together to hold the canal's project and do all that. That is the company that holds all the rights. People point to that all the time as saying the legislation in Nicaragua still has those rights held by that company. So that company could come and continue the canal. It could seize property. It has a lot of rights to do things to make the canal happen. That part is true. What is, not, what is left out of all those stories is that that person who runs that that bank, that billionaire supposedly, he's essentially disappeared. No one has any actual records of him. And the company that supposedly has all these rights is gone. They're no longer incorporated. So any contracts that name that company are instantly invalidated. It would be similar to if the billionaire who had the right to buy your house died. He's just dead. He can't buy your house anymore because he doesn't exist. So the right to buy your house is gone because the person that it was given to does not exist. That's the situation here. That company does not exist. So while there are laws on the books, supposedly, that provide a company that doesn't exist certain rights, there's no company and no person behind it to come and claim those rights. And even if they did, the chances that they would be honored approach zero. All of that was finished by 2016. By 2016, the whole world had accepted that the, the Nicaragua Canal was dead and gone and never had started. Everyone agrees that it probably had some momentum. They probably honestly tried to do it, but everybody agrees that it was dead and gone for a long time with no hope of resurrection by 2016. 2016 was a full seven years ago. Running news that the Nicaragua Canal it's a future project that it's going to create jobs, that China's backing it, all of these things, that it's part of the Belts and Roads program, which itself is gone. All of those things is a lot like running news saying that the Japanese are about to bomb Pearl Harbor. Like, this is a long time ago. These are really, really old news cycles. This has come around many times in the last 10 years. It's surprising, and I don't think 2013 was actually the first one. It's just the one that had some backing behind it to the story where there was actually Wikipedia articles and maybe there was a real person or at least someone was fabricating enough to make it have some plausibility. Everything since 2015 is completely nonsensical. And if you look up any of the actual sources like Wikipedia, you will find that there is nothing since that time. All actual news, all foundation articles are from somewhere between 2013 and 2016 and if you lived here, you know that all of it was already gone by 2015 and anything going into 2016 was still just the news cycle trying to keep interest going because it was getting eyeballs and making money by selling news reports. That is it. So that is the story of the Nicaragua Canal. When you have someone tell you about how 
First of all, this helps show just how much fake news is coming from the United States and other places, right? That these stories run and do well and get millions of views. Go look on YouTube. They get tons of views. And when you read them, there are so many comments on them of people like this is this is going to change the world. This is going to completely revitalize Nicaragua. The U.S. is going to pay for investing in Panama. Chinese, China is going to take over the world because of their new canal. All these things that long ago didn't happen. Anybody with any interest in this, any would have looked it up and realized that none of this existed. It's long dead. So either these are people who are simply commenting because they have a very passing interest without even really knowing anything about Nicaragua or China or the United States or Panama, but more likely these are all people who are either bots or paid people to just post on these stories to keep it going to provide this news about Nicaragua in awkward ways. And it's unclear exactly why they're done other than maybe to try to make Americans think that Nicaragua is much more tied to China than it actually is. It's weird, but it is part of the ongoing fake news propaganda cycle coming from the United States. In the real world, that entire thing is fake. So while it's interesting and while it could maybe have been something at some point, it is so completely out of the consciousness. If you said that the Nicaragua Canal here in Nicaragua, people would be confused. It has been essentially a generation since anyone thought that might actually be a thing. It used to be a, a bit of a joke that everyone had fallen for it, and of course it's not really happening, and it's so dead. But now it's forgotten because it was so long ago that most of the people you will talk to were children when it was going on, and they may have heard about it. But let's face it, if someone was talking about putting a canal through California 10 years ago, now you'd be like, wait, oh, there was some weird talk of some hyped up idea that made no sense whatsoever. I remember that, kind of. I don't know the details. If someone said, oh, that's a new thing, they're gonna, you'd be like, that's not a new thing. That was a joke alone. I was a kid. What are you talking about? So that is the state of the Nicaragua Canal. Don't let anyone mislead you with information about Nicaragua. Do some research. Uh, use common sense. Uh, Nicaragua is a lot more sensible place than people give it credit for. It's not doing crazy things. It is not out to change the world. It is not picking up the rampart and, and trying to uh, uh, fight its one country war against the rest of the world. It is simply a normal country doing normal things in a normal place, acting normally. And uh, once you start looking at it through the same lens that you view other countries, it, uh, it starts to make a lot more sense and not be as crazy as you think. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, please do. You can go to the link below and buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. There is a mosquito right on the lens in the middle of the picture. I think you can probably see it somewhere right down here. And uh, that helps a lot. It's like Patreon. That comes directly to me and helps pay for the cameras and the computers and all the things necessary to make this show. As always, share on social media. Pop this on Reddit, on LinkedIn. Get on Facebook. Get on those expat groups. Share this. Tell people you know that are looking into Nicaragua. Here's the kind of things you got to watch out for. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And uh, when you get on the ground, you'll realize it is a very different place than you think. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Get into the comments. Let me know what you've seen. What have people been trying to tell you? Right down there. Scroll down. It's a great conversation. And I will see all of you tomorrow.